Good morning, everybody. It's happy to, I'm so happy to be back uh, with you on our devotionals. Had to take a day off yesterday, had some complications with some things, but everything is well. Uh, it's good to be back today on Tuesday. <clears throat> um, I have a procedure on uh, Thursday, something light and small. I do want you to pray for me, but I won't be back uh, Thursday. So we'll have today and tomorrow, God's will. Today, I want to talk about servanthood. I want to talk about how you treat other people, what you do for other people, the attitude that you uh, do it with, uh, the expectations that we are to have if we are to be good servants. And I look no further than our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as uh, the example that he set as a servant. So uh, that being said, I want to go to the book of Luke, chapter number 22, and I'll start reading at 25. I'm going to read a few more verses today than I normally read. But uh, if we go to Luke, chapter 22, verse 25, I'll start there. And he says, uh, and he said unto them, the kings of the Gentiles exercise lordship over them. And they that exercise authority upon them are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so, but he that is greatest among you, let him be as the younger, and he that is chief as he that doth serve. For whether is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth, is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am among you as he that serveth. So here, uh, what's going on, Jesus has given the information to the disciples that he is about to be resurrected. I mean, he is about to be put to death and the disciples attention automatically goes from, you know, the savior being uh, put to death to who's going to take his place. And so if you go a few passages up, you'll see that that strife broke out amongst the disciples. And they were asking the questions, you know, when our leader is gone, who's going to step in his role and be a leader? And, you know, if I use my sanctified imagination, I can just assume them, you know, the, the dependency that they had on, on Jesus while he was here. Even though Jesus told them that I won't always be with you. And he, he dropped hints to them the whole time, you know, that he was he was going to return to the father. But his leadership was so powerful and I, I could assume that the disciples hearing this kind of, you know, unrattled and, and was thinking, well, if we lose this powerful leader, who's going to lead us? And so, like I said, the Bible says strife broke out between them. They was arguing about who was going to be propelled uh, to the top spot. And so Jesus puts it all in perspective because it's important for us to know this because a lot of us measure success um, in an unbiblical way. Success is not measured on how much you accumulate. Success is not measured on how much you have. As a matter of fact, biblically speaking, success has nothing to do with what you do for yourself. True success is a measure of what you do for others, your legacy of what you left here on earth for others. What did you do to help somebody else along the way. And the important thing about it, as I said, is your attitude in, servant, in servanthood is important because uh, my dad taught me this when I was a young child, very young child, and one of the, one of the life long lessons uh, that stuck with me my entire life is he said, don't, I think um, I had let one of my friends borrow a baseball bat or something. And um, when it was time to get the bat back, I don't know, he lost it or, or something happened. And, you know, one of my best buddies growing up, and you know, we kind of got into it. We fought, you know, back then you fight and two hours later, you know, you're sitting around drinking soda laughing again. But we got into a little fight about the bat, the baseball bat. And when my dad asked me what was going on, you know, I told him I let him use my bat. He lost my bat. And so my dad says something very profound. He says, don't ever give something that you need back. And, and I want to tie that in to servanthood. When you're doing something for people, don't do it with the attitude of what am I going to get back for? It? You know, what's in this for me? That's a poor attitude of a Christian servant. 
what am I going to get back from it? What, what, what are they going to do for me? You know, um, if, if, if I lead the program at church, you know, what type of accolades am I going to get? You know, things of that nature. And even, even, um, in, in, in being a pastor, you know, yes, I get compensated. Yes, we get, um, you know, the church blesses us with gifts. You know, they, a couple of weeks ago we had pastor's appreciation and everything. People were so wonderful to us and things of that nature, but you don't do it expecting that. You don't do it expecting that. Learn that now if you haven't learned it before. You don't do things for people, especially in the kingdom of God. You don't do things for people expecting, you know, everything in return. Uh, my, my, my pastor, Bishop Woodson, would always say, God is going to bless you on the backside. Just do what you are supposed to do. Don't worry about how people are going to react as far as, as, as they're giving back to you or sowing back into you. Don't do it with those concerns. Do it with the concern that I'm doing something for the kingdom of God. I'm doing something for God's children. I'm doing something for people and, and I'm serving according to what the Holy Word uh, instructs me to do. And that should make you feel good enough. But to see, the thing is, um, and like I said, this goes back to Sunday. Don't be conformed to the world. Uh, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. This is going to take time. This is going, if, if you're not there now, it's going to take time. You're going to have to be transformed by a new way of thinking because the, the world teaches you um, instant gratification where the kingdom of God teaches more delayed gratification. The things you do now, you may not be rewarded for until you get to heaven. Now, that's delayed gratification. Uh, but well, like I said, we're so used to instant gratification. We do something now. We want something in return now. Um, you know, and, and that's fair to say because, you know, people who work jobs, if you go and, and you go to your job, you know, every day of the week, yes, you are due uh, your pay, you know, then. But you see, you have to understand that the world system and, that, and that's that's right. There's nothing wrong with that. But the world system and, and, and the kingdom of God, they're 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 separate. They're separate entities. They are not the same. And the things that we are used to uh, with the worldly system, you know, we have to have a renewed thinking when it comes to the kingdom of God. It's, it's, it's totally different. So here's where Jesus is saying when he says, um, you know, who's the greatest is a he that sitteth at meat. He's talking about a servant and uh, the person that's eating. Let's let's say you're at a restaurant at one of your uh, favorite restaurants and you're at the table. You expect the person working there to come, bring your food, bring your drinks you know, serve your table and things of that nature. So Jesus is saying, who's who's the greatest among you? The, the, the one that sits at the table or is it the one that serves? He said, isn't the one that's sitting at the table? And, and, and again, this is this is um, Eastern custom. It's not Western. It's Eastern custom. He says, isn't the one sitting at the table uh, considered to be the greatest other than the servant? And then he says, but I come to you as one that serves. They knew that Jesus was the greatest. They knew that Jesus was uh, was was of the most high. They knew that that you know he was he was he was more powerful because they've seen his healing. They walked with him. They talked with him. Uh, he taught them directly, and and they saw things that other people didn't see. Heard things that other people didn't hear. Got lessons taught that other people didn't get. And he says so. They knew that he was the he was he was the greatest as far as rank. They knew that he was the highest. They knew that that he was the most important person in the room. He says, but and you know, that's that's that word that 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 that, you know, brings in the paradigm shift. That's that word that changes the whole you know velocity of the conversation. He says, but I come to you as the one that serves. If you're going to be Christ like as I close, if you're going to be Christ like you must have a servant's heart, you must have a servant's heart. You must have a servant's heart. Back in Mark, I think it's 10 and 45, he says, I came, I didn't come to be ministered to, I came to minister. He's not talking about preaching, he's talking about being a servant, ministering things to people, um, your, your, your time, your talents, your conversation, uh, your listening ear. Be a Christ-like servant. Jesus Christ was the most powerful man that walked the earth 
and he was the most humble servant that walked the earth. If you want to set a goal in your life, that's the goal that you set. Be powerful, but be a powerful servant as well. Amen. As high as you go, your goal is to reach back and pick up as many people as you can along the way. I wish I had time to talk about a testimonial service, uh, service, a testimonial that we had in our meeting on yesterday. Maybe I can share that with you on tomorrow and maybe we'll talk some more about servanthood. But as for now, let us pray. Father, we thank you for this opportunity. Heavenly Father, teach us, Lord, how to have the mind and the heart of, of a servant the way you was, Christ Jesus. Help us to help others, Lord God. And, and I know that we'll be better people and this will be a better place. Use us to your glory in Jesus name. Amen. Win the day and God's will will see you in the morning.